Your Chairman, thank you for the invitation to present at EBC 2021 meeting. The title of my presentation is City of Applicants Call as a Novel Tool for Predicting Interprocedural Side Branch Occlusion, which is actually the first presentation of two sets of presentations. I have nothing to disclose. There may be two major issues in bifurcation PCI. The first is is it worth to treat side branch? Second topic is how to predict and treat gelled signed branch before PCI, not during or after ballooning. In this first presentation, I'd like to introduce CD Vapkin's score, which was made to predict loss or gelling of side branch before PCI from coronary CT image. CT bifurcation score was derived from a small single center registry using 260 bifurcations. There was no significant differences in clinical characteristics between 40 patients with sediment occlusion and 206 patients without occlusion, except higher elevation of post procedural CKMB in side branch occlusion group. In poor bifurcation vessel analysis, Regarding angiographic characteristics, the reference diameter and minimal luminal diameter of both main and side branch were smaller in occlusion group compared to non occlusion group, but there was no difference in the bifurcation angle between two groups. Therefore, the main branch size stent diameter was slightly larger in side branch occlusion group compared to non occlusion group. The plug characteristics analysis is quite complex. In brief, Applications with some complex plugs such as calcified or low tension plug in main or side branch, or bifurcations with smaller side branch compared to main branch, tended to lose side branch after main branch ballooning or stenting. We did lots of regression and found four parameters that can predict robustly side branch occlusion during PCI. We developed the CT bifurcation score, which calculates the risk of sediment occlusion based on the presence of calcified plug, low tension plug, the length of side branch plug, and the ratio of main vessel to side branch vessel area. The sum of these four points are the CT bifurcation score. A case of interprocedural side branch occlusion. In this array to diagonal bifurcation region, there is a large amount of low density plug and calcification spot in LAD. After sending of LAD, although the diagonal branch was protected by wire, the diagonal branch suddenly disappeared. In another case, there is a large amount of low density plug and several calcification spot in LAD and diagonal branch. Although the diagonal branch was protected by wire, after the stenting of LAD, we lost diagonal branch. The performance of CT bifurcation score for predicting side branch occlusion was much higher. C statics of 0.75 compared to angiographically derived scores, medial clarification, or reserve score. Take home messages from this CT bifurcation score is shown here. Side branch jailing can be predicted by assessing the CT bifurcation score, which is based on the characteristics or size of plug, including calcified plug in main vessel, low tension in main vessel or side branch, side branch plug length of more than 5 mm, or smaller side branch compared to main branch, defined by area ratio of more than 4.3 or diameter ratio of more than 2.1. Thank you for your attention. Dear Chairman, thank you for the invitation to present at EBC 2021 meeting. The title of my presentation is Visually Estimated Resolve Score Based on Computed Tomography to Predict Side Branch Occlusion in Percutaneous Bifurcation Intervention. Bifurcation lesions account for 15 to 20% of all percutaneous coronary interventions, and side branch occlusion remains major procedural complication. 
to predict the probability of side branch occlusion after main vessel stenting, Resolve score was designed for evaluation of invasive coronary angiograms. Notably, the simple tool showed good results with both quantitative measurements as well as visual estimation. Originally, score consists of six different variables and five out of, out of those six with only exception of TIMI flow grade can be derived from preprocedural computed tomography and geography, a modality that is currently emerging as an attractive method for non-invasive assessment of coronary arteries before attempted PCI. Our group showed previously that quantitative CTA result score performs as good as gold standard being angiographic visual resolve score. Mm, whereas the quantitative coronary analysis provides an objective determination of severity and extent of coronary artery disease, it might be time consuming and thus less frequently used in real life clinical practice. To simplify and expand the application of non invasive CTA for predicting side branch occlusion, we employ the visual estimation of each constituent element of the original quantitative CTA resolve score. Test ground for our study was a sample of 400 bifurcation lesions in 363 patients in whom a total of 28 side branch occlusions were noted. The overall diagnostic capability of CTA derived resolve score was significantly higher as compared with its quantitative counterpart. The results of the reclassification analysis revealed that the CTA-derived visual resolve score corrected, correctly predicted more lesions with side branch occlusion into the highest risk category as compared with the quantitative CTA resolve score, thereby suggesting improved discrimination among lesions at greater risk of side branch compromise. We believe that this observation might rely on numerically, numerically higher area under the curve of CTA-derived visual resolved score for three out of four different constituent elements of the scores. Moreover, our data confirmed ability of, uh, of CTA-derived visual resolve score to stratify lesions into high-risk group and non-high-risk group of side branch occlusion, specifically by using the cutoff value of 17 point, which was defined as the lowest score in quartile four for discrimination between high risk group and non high risk group. The incidence of side branch occlusion was significantly higher in the high risk group, and that being nearly 19% than in the non high risk group, that being cumulatively 3.8%. Also, the discriminatory performance of CTA-derived visual score, uh, resolve score was equal to the quantitative CTA-derived resolve score as confirmed by comparable rates of side branch occlusion within high-risk groups. Interestingly and consistently with prior angiographic studies, the lowest score in quartile four uh, for CTA-derived visual score being 17 points was higher than that of its quantitative counterpart being 12 points. That emphasizes, emphasizes the overestimation of visual assessment when compared with quantitative CTA analysis. This aspect is underscored by the agreement between visual and quantitative CTA analysis. While it was excellent for bifurcation angle and moderate for diameter stenosis of side branch, it was only fair for diameter ratio between main vessel and side branch and poor for diameter stenosis of bifurcation core. Noteworthy the agreement between the constituent elements of CTA derived scores was comparable to prior comparison of visual estimated versus quantitative angiography-based resolve score where kappa ranged between 0.2 up to 0.4, thereby suggesting certain level of variability intrinsic to each imaging modality. Interestingly, we noted numerically 
higher values of all visual constituent elements of the scores as compared with their quantitative counterparts along with reclassification of the quantitative CTA derived resolve score into higher categories based on visual assessment. As such, the proposed CTA derived visual resolve score might be particularly useful in identification uh, of larger number of lesions at increased risk of side branch occlusion after initial main vessel stenting and might be used to determine optimal preemptive measures depending on the importance of the side branch. This could include, for example, protection of the side branch with the body wire. It can include application of two stent techniques uh, of the procedure or even uh, deferring PCI and referring specific patients into the surgery. Nonetheless, further studies are warranted to find specific CTA predictors of side branch occlusion. Thank you for your attention. Dear Chairman, thank you for the kind invitation to present at the European Bifurcation Club 2021 meeting. My name is Max Opolski, and the title of my presentation is Coronary CT for Guidance of Bifurcation PCI. By the way of background, let me state that coronary CT outplays invasive cuff for display of coronary plaque regarding both its localization and characteristics, and it performs equally well for assessment of medinal classification, bifurcation angle, and complications of PCI. So maybe you are barking up the wrong tree, and that is the angiogram tree. So what data do we have to justify the uptake of coronary CT for guiding bifurcation PCI? Well, the concept of CT-guided PCI for planning bifurcation intervention was first explored in our center in a prospective randomized clinical trial, which randomized 93 patients with bifurcation lesions to either angiography or CT-guided PCI. Interestingly, the CT-guided approach resulted in lower number of implanted stents, both in the main vessel and the side branch, as well as the higher frequency of non-compliant balloon post-dilatation. Importantly, one of the potential explanations for this observation is that coronary CT, in contrast to the invasive cuff, has the intrinsic ability to show the exact distribution of residual plaque so that you're more prone to cover it with a single longer stand. Number two, coronary CT can be used to predict side branch occlusion in provisional standing approach as confirmed by our study group on the largest up to now CT registry, including 363 patients with altogether 400 bifurcation lesions. Indeed, both the quantitative and visually assessed CT derived resolve scores as well as the presence of non-calcified plaque in the side branch, and finally Medina class with any proximal main vessel and side branch involvement as assessed by cardiac CT, have the ability to predict side branch occlusion after main vessel standing. And here you can see an example of LAD diagonal branch bifurcation lesion in coronary CT that clearly displays plaque characteristics as well as the bifurcation angle. Importantly, the total CT-derived resolve score was remarkably high, summing up the distribution of plaque at the side of the side branch, the stenosis of both the main vessel and the side branch, as well as the high main vessel to side branch diameter ratio. In addition, we could also see a non-calcified low attenuation plaque the side branch ostium, resulting in side branch occlusion after main vessel standing, despite the presence of a safety wire in the diagonal branch. Number three, there is a gargantuan number of studies suggesting a direct relationship between low attenuation plaque, positive remodeling, and spotty calcification and periprocedural MI defined by troponin rise 
or no re reflow phenomenon during PCI. Here you can appreciate this ugly looking low attenuation plaque with positive remodeling and spotty calcium that was actually referred for PCI. However, after stent implantation, the no reflow phenomenon was observed and subsequent troponin rise was reported. Last but not least, coronary CT can be brought directly to the calf lab to assist in resolving proximal cap ambiguity in CTO intervention. Here you can see a complex CT, CTO LAD flash occlusion in a post cabbage patient that couldn't be resolved and solved out by coronary angio despite dual catheter injection. Remarkably, the guide wire kept going to the septal branch or the subintimal space of the intermediate branch, which was actually easily detected with CT co-registration and ultimately put into the right course of LAD, resulting in a good final result. Ultimately, we have the new kit on the block, the so-called CT perfusion, that allows to assess ischemia based on a simple dynamic scan protocol using adenosine or regadenosine. Here you can appreciate complete resolution of ischemia on dynamic CT perfusion after successful recanalization of occluded RCA using integrate wiring approach without loss of any significant side branch. Now, that's a different story though of successful CTO RCA recanalization, but using the reverse car technique, where I most of the RV branches were lost, corresponding to residual perfusion defect in the mid inferior wall on follow-up CT perfusion. In conclusion, coronary CT exceeds invasive angio in identification and characterization of coronary plaque in bifurcation lesions. Coronary CT can predict the risk of side branch occlusion and the risk of PCI-related MI in bifurcation lesions. Last but not least, coronary CT co-registration resolves proximal cap ambiguity in osteo bifurcation CTO lesions. And finally, we have the new kit on the block, the so-called CT perfusion that may aid in estimating the area at risk for side branch occlusion in coronary bifurcation intervention. Thank you. So dear chairman, thank you for the invitation to present at the EBC 2021 meeting. The title of my presentation is Biochemical CT Segmentation to Define a Relevant Site Branch as Source well for the Progress. I have nothing to disclose. There may be two major issues in bifurcation PCI. The first is, is it worth to treat side branch? Second topic is, how to predict and treat shared side branch before PCI, not during or after ballooning. Fraction of micro mass, the amount of myocardium subtended by the vessel and CT Batkin score may answer each question. Why coronary artery such size and branches in such pattern? Not a few but large vessels, no many small vessels, but hierarchical large and small vessels. Because hierarchical branch network is the most energy efficient system, life is sustained by transporting and distributing materials. So the performance of network is essential for life and is maximized by minimizing the energy and space of network. Eventually, the human vascular system network follows the form of hierarchical branch network. Two mathematical principles that has been used extensively in life science can be applied to calculate the vessel specific amount of myocardium. The first is boronic tessellation based on geometry, and the second is allometric strict scaling law based on the logarithmic correlations in life science.
The theoretical coefficients of allometric scan law has been studied extensively in these studies, and we have shown that these theoretical coefficients match very well with the real coefficients of allometric scale in human heart. We investigated the amount of myocardial mass subtended by main vessels and side branches from almost 3,000 bifurcations. As shown in this figure, in poor bifurcation analysis, major vessel supplies 1.5 to 9-fold larger myocardial mass compared with side branches. Therefore, Except left main, only one out of every five known left main bifurcations, the side brain supplies significant amount of myocardium defined by FMM or the amount of myocardial mass of more than 10%. For precise calculation of FMM, we need CT, but from angiography, we can reasonably estimate the amount of myocardium subjected by the side branch. If the length is more than 73 mm, then we suggest that the side branch has some significant role. FM also explains why there is a mismatch of anatomy and physiology between main branch and side branch. Hence, the side branch always has a smaller myocardial mass, the frequency of myocardial ischemia is lower, and the FFR is higher in side branch. So, CT can predict major issues in biofilm PCA, such as clinical significance of side branch, or the risk of side branch occlusion, even before procedure. So, I'd like to suggest biofilm PCA strategy based on CT. The first situation is when both the microdot mass of main vessel and side branch are large, such as a left main bifurcation. Please treat both branch with respect because both vessels supply a large amount of myocardium. Technical strategy is, is usually focused on the treatment of side branch osteal plug, such as two change technique including decay crush, culotte, or a tap. Situation 2. If the myocardial mass of main vessel is much larger than the mass of side branch, mostly LED diagonal bifurcation, Please focus on the main base treatment and be conservative to side branch treatment because main base is much larger than side branch. Technically, one standard structure with or without side branch treatment would be preferred. Situation 3. If both the microdome mass of main base and side branch are similar but both are small, most circumflex OA or PDA period bifurcations. Both main base and side branch may be equally important. So please treat wisely both vessels. Side branch might need aggressive treatment, otherwise PCI may save just a half of target myocardium. And consider the whole amount of main vessel and side branch myocardium. If both are so small, PCI itself may have very limited clinical benefit. If CT bargain score is 0 or 1, the risk of side branch occlusion is not so high. So you can use high branch guiding catheter and there will be no need of side branch wiring. If CT bypass score is two or higher, you may need the six branch guiding catheter and may also need provisional side branch wiring even if the side branch is, is not so stenotic. Take home message from CT bypass studies are shown here. Side branch supplies smaller myocardial mass and show less physiological severity despite similar severity of stenosis, especially LAD diagonal bifurcation. Side branch with length of more than 73 mm, mm means significant amount of myocardium, so please respect it. Side branch jailing can be predicted by assessing ugly or large amount of bifurcation plug represented by CT bifurcation score. Thank you for your attention.